host Greg and I'm also here with Mitchell today and we are back on the there's Mitchell. We are back on the O2 Jetta TDI today project more or less. I have been driving it up until uh, a week ago when I did an oil change and I noticed that the radiator was starting to leak out of one of the tanks. So today we are going to strip the entire front of the car off because that's what you have to do in order to change the rad. We'll put a new rad in it and probably new mounts and I also have um, a much much better set of headlights that we're going to swap in so that I can actually see when I'm driving in the dark. Um, and so yeah that's the plan. We have to take the grill out, the bumper cover off, um, and I think part of the rad support has to come undone to be able to actually get to the radiator finally. It's not like the Mark IIs where you can just unbolt it and you just lift it out the top and you're done. This one you got to strip a whole bunch of plastic and stuff out of the way so basically without further ado we're going to dig into that and uh, if we run into any problems we'll explain but other than that we're just going to try and get to the point of getting the old radiator out. We'll probably get the coolant draining first thing. There is a drain valve down there on the bottom. And we'll try and put a hose on it. Um, we can try and show that I guess. It's nothing special, there's just a little black knob and a little uh, spigot that you can put a rubber hose on and put it into a jug so you don't lose it everywhere. In other we'll, words, not as painful as the BMW was. <coughs> yeah, that's, yeah. So we'll get that draining and let it drain while we start with, this is the hardest part, getting the, there's actually missing one, but getting this undone without breaking the grill or any of the, the plastic clips, so that should be interesting. It's not exactly warm right now I guess it's up to 10 degrees Celsius so plastic doesn't like the cold so we'll, we'll do our best not to break stuff but uh, yeah so let's dig in Okay, so we got the coolant draining there. It's just about drained already. It wasn't that much more than that's what I was expecting. So we're just gonna start into the grill here, try and get the grill out and then the headlights. Um, you have to, stupid thing about these, you can't take the headlights out unless you take the bumper cover off. So we're just gonna dig into that. I don't remember exactly the order of things, but we'll figure it out as we go. So, and if there's anything we run into trouble, we'll elaborate. Okay, so from what I can tell and what I remember, there's supposed to be a clip in the middle holding this, but I think it's either broken or just already been released. Because you're supposed to have to put the screwdriver in there and pop that part. But then there's clips or dowels, I guess they are, over here that should just like that. That was way easier than I remember it being. Once you know how to do it, that's the whole trick. Now this part is stupid. Because the latch goes through here and you can't take it off. So where's that teeny? Actually, maybe this will work. So they did give you something at least to work with. Maybe? 
Bobby. That's the pet that's there. This has to come off of here somehow. Do not break. There we go. So, I don't know if they can see that from there. So there's a little flip catch here that basically the pin the pin is there for the pivot for the lever here so you have to spread the plastic arms here to get them over the pins and then you snap the clip down and that stops them from coming off so then when you want to take it off you got to pop it up and gently pry the plastic again 20 year old plastic gently pry it off of the pins and then you can take the whole grill assembly out of the way that's the hardest part now we're off the hardest part though is going to be undoing all of these internal hex fasteners without either twisting them off or the welded nut on the inside of the rad support spinning in the plastic because it's a plastic or a composite core support but they used steel fasteners so and again it's 20 years old so almost. we're gonna have fun with that yeah enjoy enjoy again. Yep. So you lost two of five. Yeah. Now we got to go to the wheel wells, I guess. That freaking Phillips. Phillips. <sighs> and I, okay. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely did not do this. You do not use. I mean, Volkswagen likes to use Phillips, but you do not use Phillips or Robertson screws in automotive. You know. You those, shouldn't even use Torx. Remember that uh, step on the silver truck that had like. All different Six different screws. kinds of screws in it? Yeah. No, you don't use Robertson in automotive. It's a wood screw. But yet, I find stuff all the time where people have put giant deck screws in automotive applications. Okay. And he's got to get a Phillips for that one. Yeah. Don't have to because it's actually broken up. <laughs> well, if I can fix the bumper like I want to, then that'll be necessary, but not for right now. I could plastic weld this, I guess. Okay. Plastic dip. No, no plastic dipping. That's paint. Okay. Uh, I think. Uh, let me switch the camera back then. We should probably also take the clearance markers off before we try and pull the bumper off. So. Let's do that then. Okay. Let's start with this one. Can I remember how it works is the question. I'm assuming it... That's not what I figured it did. Well, you have no idea. The 
work that went into that for absolutely no reason. You know, with all the engineering time they spent on that, they could have designed a better turbo. <laughs> uh huh. There, so that hopefully it won't get hurt. To the other side. So let's just see. I don't know if there's anything else, but are you really gonna put gloves on? <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else, so let's just take her easy. We forgot bolts because I'm dumb. And I haven't done this in a while. Can't they're also, see anything out they're of also dirty right now, but yeah. But I'm not going to throw them away because they've got the uh, expensive bulbs that I put in here. This is one of the easy, easy, beautiful new ones. Easy, easy, beautiful. <laughs> it's a little bit scratched, but at least it's clear. It's not all fogged up like the other one. Yeah. It's not brand new, obviously, but it's, no. good. it's used, but it's original Hella Volkswagen is the best quality you can get as opposed to any replacement one is going to be a cheap piece of crap. I don't know for sure if you can still buy these new. I, only if you happen to find a place that had some NOS stock. But, um, you can just put it on there. 
I don't think German parts has them still. So. Uh, they might, but they're not going to be original. They're not going to be. Oh, they're not going to be. Hello, they're not going to be OEM. This is all completely destroyed. I noticed. That's supposed to be directing the air into the intercooler. I wonder why you have cooling problems. There's no cooling problems. That's a different kind of cooling. Theoretically, intercooler cooling is more important than anything. Well, I mean, the Mark IIs don't have intercoolers at all, so. But I guess on a diesel, it's not as important. Yeah. They run hotter. Hey, this one's still got the release catch on. Fire that one off into the sunset too. No, once we take the bulbs out of it, maybe. 